Hi, I'm Jim Pierbon, um, an energy marketing consultant here in the U.S. Uh, and the Game Changers columnist at TheEnergyCollective.com. And I'm here at the Energy Storage Association's annual conference in Washington, D.C. with uh, Peter Thomas, the Chief Strategic Officer at FIAM in Italy. Uh, Peter, you've got operations, as I understand it, in more than 60 locales or countries around the world. Give us a 30,000 foot view of some of the most exciting irons in the fire, if you will. Well, we certainly um, uh, have irons in the fire in uh, energy storage, and so we, we manufacture um, salt batteries in, in, in Switzerland and use those uh, you know, batteries to store energy for wind and solar mm -hmm. and also for telecom applications in, in remote sites and also for electric, mo really like electric mobility. Um, so we call it sustainable mobility for electric buses and electric um, uh, mining equipment and trains and, and things and things of that. And so uh, we're we're a, we're a company that's all about being green. Okay. For our uh, energy storage stakeholders here in in North America, um, where does North America sit in the grand scheme of things vis-a-vis -vis the other markets you serve? You know, are we behind the eight ball? Are we catching up or how do well, we sit? Well, so um, I think starting last year with the uh, new legislation that was passed by the state of California, um, uh, which mandates a uh, minimum procurement of 1.3 gigawatts, really catapulted the this market and the attention on this market. Closely following behind that is what's going on in the, in the state of, of, uh, of New York, which is um, focused on what happens if there's another Hurricane Sandy, and so for grid reliability. Sure. And so uh, with that and across the U.S., it's really made this a, a, a very attractive market. So I don't know that we are um, behind here in the U.S. I wouldn't put it that way, but uh, it's a market that's, that, ha that is starting to develop very rapidly. Okay. I'm reading more about sodium nickel chloride technology especially for more sustainable energy applications. Explain that and how it's uh, set up to scale around the world. So this is, a, this is a very simple, safe chemistry. It's only made of salt and nickel. Okay. And it, um, so it's, we show it as a salt shaker. Um, and so it's a battery chemistry that you can eat. Um, okay. It is a, uh, so it's inherently safe. Um, because it, it, it cannot catch on fire. Right. Um, and it is, um, the raw materials are uh, widely and abundantly available. And, and so it's a battery um, that we feel is very sturdy and that we have been deploying. Um, this you know, battery has been used um, in, for electric buses as an example for almost 10 years. We have 150 million road miles of experience for, for this. So this, this uh, battery chemistry reduces um, greenhouse gases um, and also allows you to store energy from solar farms and wind farms which have very intermittent um, uh, use. Okay. And so uh, I can take the energy from a, a PV array uh, during the day and use it for the peak, which you know happens later in the day. Okay. And so uh, those are just some of the applications. Right. Um, speaking of greenhouse gases, you know, this past Monday, um, the U.S. EPA uh, proposed uh, carbon restrictions on existing power plants. Um, what do you make of that? You know, as you view the U.S. market from northern Italy, um, is that a uh, an intriguing opportunity for FEM? It's a very intriguing opportunity for uh, FIM because I think it will uh, create even a, a, a more attractive energy storage market here in the U.S. than where previously we were uh, have been focused on, as I just said, on solar and wind. Now conventional generation has new uh, new requirements that 
instead of replacing a peaker plant uh, with another fossil fuel, you can use an energy storage. And so uh, we have a, our battery solution is a, a, a long-term uh, battery solution that is a, uh, a three to six hour energy solution. So it acts like a generation asset. Okay. Um, and so we think it's a big opportunity. All right. Let's say, I'm going to role play a little bit here. Let's say you're having dinner tonight with a, uh, a long time energy utility, electric utility executive. Say in a state that hasn't had to face up to competition or competitive forces of any kind. How would you lead him down um, the path to energy storage so that he sees the opportunity for his company, for his career, uh, for his constituents in the state that he serves? Well, so, uh, <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I think that you know, uh, first and first and foremost is we can improve the reliability uh, and the quality of service from the grid. We can remove intermittency off off of the grid, and we can do it in a in a safe way. So as a as a as a utility executive. Um, my number one concern is safety and having safe, reliable service. And this is an asset that is inherently safe um, and its time is now because of our aging fleet of, of, of plants um, that you just, you know, you know, the EPA alludes to that there are a thousand plants over, you know, 40 years old, you know. You now have a different alternative than just using a gas turbine or um, another another fossil fuel. You can now use energy storage. All right. Now let's uh, let's pretend that I'm a lead certified commercial building developer, say in Chicago, yeah. um, but I haven't caught on to energy storage yet. How would you whet his appetite? Um, because energy storage does earn you uh, points in the lead system. Right. And so, um, because we are 100% uh, recyclable, um, but is one thing that is very different than uh, other battery chemistries that they may think about. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that in a lead building that you can use energy storage is to really reduce consumption of electricity off the grid, okay? So I can become much more efficient. I can store the energy off of the solar panels that are going to be in the most lead buildings okay. um, and uh, use that on site to, re to really reduce demand um, and to make it much, much more efficient. Um, uh, than you would have without energy storage. All right. Now let's talk about car batteries. I understand you make batteries for all of the major automobile manufacturers. How is a car battery for a conventional gasoline engine going to be different or better 10 years from now? And well, the same for electric vehicles 10 years from now. Okay, well so for, you know, for the conventional combustion engineering cars, I think the car battery will evolve into um, uh, a away from a pure lead acid solution to a hybrid solution that uses lead acid for traditional starting but uses a lithium solution for what we call anti-idling which will further reduce the greenhouse gases and anti-idling The battery will do that? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. The How many years will. away are we from being able to buy that kind of a battery in a new car? Oh, I would say uh, within five years. Really? Yes. Okay. Now, about uh, how about electric vehicles? You know, on the electric vehicle side, um, I see we we have a different view of of the world. The, you know, the Tesla is a wonderful yeah. vehicle. It's a great very vehicle, cool. um, uh, and it goes very fast. Um, and but we're like the old uh, the old the old reliable, and so we our market on the electric side is for delivery vans and school buses that I talked about and, and those those types of applications where you don't need to go more than 70 miles an hour okay, okay? but but you but you need a quiet solution 
You know, so like for a garbage truck, as an example, being able to have a quiet garbage truck really changes the business model for a waste management. I know it would make us a lot happier in the neighborhood that I live in, Virginia, uh, <laughs> that much uh, happier about our garbage service. So last question before we end. Um, what would you say is the most exciting new application that your company is involved with? And hopefully you'll be able to talk about right here if you fast forward 10 or 15 years. Wow, 10 or 15 years, that's... So you're, you're permitted to speculate a little bit, that's but a not too much. Thing. Okay, so um, I think that what, what, that what we're looking at is having smaller um, community energy storage units uh, that really put storage on the customer side of, um, of the meter for the first time. Um, Outside of the energy storage area, we're, we're also the um, largest manufacturer of custom-made organic light emitting diodes. And LEDs, okay. Organic. Organic LEDs. Which is totally different than a traditional LED. Okay, because you made that and, uh, and, point. <laughs> and it's, it's the first light that you can look at without going blind, and it's the first light that you can touch without burning, and it's more efficient than a traditional light emitting diet. And so in the next 10 years, you're, you're going to see those on cars for tail lights. You'll see them uh, inside windows. You'll see a lot of applications for organic light. Very interesting. Glad I asked the question. Peter, Good. thanks very much. Thank you. Enjoyed the talk.